Thank you both. Thank you both for a, a really uh, interesting talk. And I've asked the other speakers to come back. Um, and uh, I'd just like to start um, by perhaps uh, we could have a reaction from Elizabeth and Claire. If, is Elizabeth still here? Um, I found it. Uh, it's not so much a question, but, you know, do you feel there's a common uh, element that's come through from these talks? Uh, one thing that I think is um, to increase inclusion, mentoring, uh, or some kind of shepherding or sponsoring is important. And I, I was thinking um, this notion that to contribute to many projects, open science, et cetera. There is an element of privilege because you need to have a basic education, but also um, this notion of um, the, um, the fact that you ha having social capital, having a network where someone can help you and say, go for that job or, you know, this job looks great for you. Uh, what do you think? I don't know what your impressions are. Elizabeth, uh, I know you put some things in the chat, so maybe you'd like to speak first. Oh, I just appreciate this talk very much. Um, so many of the items resonated with me in my experience, my journey, my circuitous path. And I think being resourceful and um, having good advocates, having male allies, I think the, the I'm thrilled to see some male names that are present as male um, because it's not going, we're not going to affect systemic change until we recruit more male allies and um, understand. And I, when, when I talk to Pan-African groups, I tell them, you know, women are 50% of your potential. So why would you hold them back? You know, get your knee off their neck and let them, let them, because they're the ones that go out and help uh, on their own accord when there are problems. And it's just such a shame to see them held back in places where it is systemic. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I think we have to keep trying. Yeah, I think to add to that, it comes back to the conversation around privilege as well. People who have the privilege, whatever that is, if they can use that to help other people get that st first step up in the door, whatever metaphor you want to use, uh, that can go a long way. And also uh, vouching for someone like, in the same way that you, you may vouch for somebody on your team when you want to get them promoted. Vouching for somebody in one of these communities gives them credibility. They, they, they take your credibility and, and can use that if you have that kind of reputation. And I think that's perhaps forgotten about sometimes in all of the, the bad side of, of inclusion when you have the right allies and supporters. And and uh, honestly, even myself as a white woman, I yes, I, I'm in a minority from a gender perspective, but but maybe not from a racial perspective. And it's about being understanding to, to other folks and, and including them and bringing them in as well. So everybody can help everybody, I think. I've noticed uh, during, yeah, I did about five cohorts during the COVID virtual experience. Um, we had, I was the co-chair for the practice and experience and advanced research computing um, student program for two, two COVID years, all virtual. And then I was involved with the supercomputing conference student program as well. And I noticed a lot of um, apathy and just, if students are struggling, and it, that's really concerning to me. And I've seen a lot of um, people that have taken the opportunity to come out, um, you know, in the in the queer, lesbian, bi, bisexual, gender, um, a non-binomial sense. Um, and I think that's a silver lining. I think possibly the seclusion has enabled people to 
self-reflect and become who they were intended to be. And that's, that's where allies are extremely important. I've had people reach out to me that was totally unexpected. And I was delighted to have been in a position to um, offer a positive uh, word and, and just be an ear, someone to talk to. So I think we're, I really want to watch our, our students closely as we come out of this. Hopefully we're coming out of this. But I think that's an area where we, we need to all be watching closely is the mental health of our students as well. It's um, concerning. COVID's been hard on everybody. Yeah, I think um, it's important for software engineering students to uh, many uh, try and find their feet and say to me, how can I get involved in an open source project? And uh, from my perspective, I notice that certain open source projects are very welcoming. They actually um, keep lists of things that people can do that would be uh, something a student could tackle. They offer shepherding or mentoring, et cetera. But other projects obviously are not so uh, welcoming. But on the other hand, that may well be because they have a rather specific focus, uh, are not able to accommodate uh, new members. Uh, however, I. I think it's really been a, a fantastic evening, and I think all of you in your own way have contributed in a, in a very wide uh, view of things, going from open science. And even there, we saw how important it is, sharing of resources, um, um, building these um, computational infrastructures that are open for research projects, et cetera, to facilitate their work. Um, you know, we, we all know the power of the World Wide Web, but also specific scientific networks. And uh, Claire, it's been wonderful that you could share your experience as a, a, a working software engineer who's really um, had a wide-ranging experience uh, and very practical suggestions and also looking at it from a company standpoint. And finally, uh, Sarah and Anne, that was really interesting to hear your work. And, you know, I never contemplated plastic surgery and no one ever recommended it to me. But <laughs> on the other hand, uh, I have spent most of my career working in universities or university startups, so perhaps I was in a slightly different atmosphere, uh, environment, <laughs> but uh, all very insightful and useful. And I think this will be a fantastic resource uh, for people to uh, view when they can listen to the videos of your talks and follow up with you. So I hope... Uh, it's helped you extend your social networks, Elizabeth. And uh, I hope your research continues, Anna and Sarah. And all the best, Claire, in your career. Uh, it's always um, interesting to, for me to see how uh, former students have done. And of course, you've gone far more than I have. So uh, it's wonderful to hear everyone speak this evening. And thank you so much all for taking part. So um, I think we can leave the meeting formally now. And if the people want to stay and chat, uh, although we're way over our time. So thank you all for taking part. And uh, 